welcome back knitters. So I want to talk a little bit more about the beginning portion of the My Cup of Tea sock knit along. Um, the chart portion of the leg seems to be causing several people some issues. And I don't mean just one or two random beginner knitters. I mean like there's a bunch of people that are having some heartburn over the chart and the way the increases are performed in relation to where the marker is that I was using. And my apologies, I kind of um, I kind of went over that maybe a little too quickly in the first video in part one. So consider this an addendum to that and it's part one and a half, okay? So I'm gonna backdate this video a little bit so that when it shows in the playlist, it'll all be in order. All right, so I think that a lot of the difficulty that people have had is they're not understanding the original stitch that you perform the increases from. So I've chosen to do my increases a little bit differently than the author of the pattern. She suggests the bar increase, which is simply just a lifted, you know, just lifting the bar that the strand of yarn that runs horizontally between two knit stitches. Um, I don't care for that because I guess maybe it's just me, but the way that I've done that in the past, it tends to create a little hole. And it, you know, if that's a design element and you like that, that's totally fine. Um, but it's not my jam. So I prefer to do the ref, right and left lifted that's hard to say, left and right lifted leaning increases um, so that it leans in conjunction with the way the pattern is flowing on each side. So let's get to it and I'll show you what I mean and I'll show you how you can differentiate between which row you need to lift from, okay? All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing I think we need to do is review. First of all, we need to review how to make right and left lifted leaning increases. So what, when you're knitting along and your pattern calls for a right leaning increase, we're just going along and now all of a sudden we wanna make an increase. So I've got this stitch that's on the turquoise one that's on the needle and then I have the one in the row below, which in my case right now is this purpley pinkish kind of one. So what I'm going to do to make one that leans to the right would be to just grab a hold of this leg right here and lift it up and put it on this needle and knit right into it. Okay, simple enough. Now I've done a make one make one right. And you can see that's an two stitches right together. You can tell that that purple loop has been pulled over to the right and used to make that stitch. Okay, so that was a make one right. Now if I want to make one to the left, keep in mind where that pink row was. All right, see the pink row is what we used to make our new stitch. So in the case of making one to the right, I would lift this pink leg right here, but I'm gonna make one to the left and I need to use, I want it to lean to the left, so I'm gonna use the stitch that's on my right hand needle in order to do that. However, I need to knit it first so I can get on the other side of it. So what I mean by that is if I want to stitch to the lean to the left, so I want it to lean left, I need to lift the left leg so you know how a stitch has two legs. It has the right leg and it has the left leg. I need to lift the left leg, but I gotta get over on the other side of that to do that. I need to be on the left side of this turquoise stitch in order to, uh, to do that. So I need to just knit that so that I can be over here on the left side. So it appears as if you're lifting it from the row below, and you are, but you're still on the same row that you were when you made the right hand one. You're still using the same pink row, okay? So I'm gonna go in and lift the leg of the left pink one here. And when I lift it out, it looks like it's twisted, and it is, so I'm gonna lift, knit into the back of it to orient it properly on my needle. So I have made two new stitches from the pink row. All right. So one more time. So if I'm gonna make one to the right, I simply go down to the row below the host stitch that's on my needle, go down to the row below, lift it up and place it on my left hand needle and just knit right into it, okay? Easy. And then knit the host stitch, meaning the one that we were using. 
Now I want to make one that leans to the left. So I need to knit the host stitch first so that I can be on the left side of it. So I can grab the left leg of the pink row, which is the same row that we used for the right hand one. It's just that we had to knit the host one first to get to the other side. Now I need to knit into the back of that one so that I orient it properly on my needle. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand the left and right and where to pull the legs from. All right, now I'm going to tink back and we're going to get started on the specific pattern that we're talking about. Okay, then it just occurred to me maybe you want to see the tinking part. So I know that all I did here was lift that up on the needle to make the stitch so I can just simply let that one go and then I go into the row below and let that off. This one was a make one right, so I know that this first loop is actually my host stitch, if you will. So I'm just going to go into there, let that off, and then I'm just going to, you can tell I'm just going to slip that off. All right, now I've tinked back and I'm back to where I started. Okay, so let me get all the way back to where we would have began the rest, the My Cup of Tea chart pattern, and we'll go from there. Okay, I chose to cast on more than the pattern calls for, so I have what I'm calling framing stitches on the outsides of my chart. I have some extra stitches here that I need to do on the front of my sock leg before I begin the chart. And you may too, you may have four extra ones or six or eight. And whatever that is for you, that's fine. So I'm gonna demonstrate using four stitches that are extra here, and then we're gonna place the marker and that's gonna designate when we need to begin the chart. Okay, so now the thing to be mindful of here is the M means make one. That's where you make your brand new stitch. This M designates the new stitch, not the host stitch, but the M is for the brand new stitch that you've created when you do your lifted increase. Okay, so let's be clear about that. I like how Cat Bordy explains it. I've been calling them host stitches, but you can also just consider this is the daughter. All right, where are all the daughters? The brand new stitches are the daughters, okay? The row below, this turquoise one, would be the mother, and the row below that would be the grandmother. And so you can consider this like generations, right? Here's the daughter, here's the mother, right here, the mother's right leg to be specific, and here's the grandmother in the row below. What we want to do when we make one to the left is we want to take the grandmother's left leg and we're going to pull that up and knit right into the back of it so that we don't twist it. Okay, so there's a make one left. That's the M on your chart. Now immediately on row one, we need to do a slip slip knit decrease. Okay, so I'm going to slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then I go in underneath as usual and knit those together. Okay, there's a, several ways to do that. Some people slip the first one as if to knit, they slip the second one as if to purl, and then they knit them through the back loop together. The difference is negligible. Do what works best for you. All right, and then I'm just gonna knit four plain. Then I'm going to knit two together. All right. Knit three. Then the pattern has the little M again. And again, that's a make one. So in this case, I want it to lean to the right because that's the direction that my increases are going in that portion of the chart. So to make one right, I have the purple one here is the daughter. To make one to the right, I'm gonna get the pink mother's right leg. So right here, lift that up and put it on the needle. Now that's the make one. Okay, that is the make one. The two center stitches are the mother, or sorry, the daughter, and then the next daughter. Then I'm gonna make another one that leans to the left, but I'm still pulling the leg of the pink row stitches, okay? So just because she became a grandmother doesn't mean anything is different. I lift that up and knit through the back loop. Okay, so that's my center section. Here's the new make one right there. There's the two plain ones I knitted, and then here's the left make one. I'm gonna knit three more. And do my slip, slip, knit. Slip, slip, knit. All right. 
knit four, three, okay, knit two together. Oh, I don't know why that's so fiddly right here. I'm having trouble getting in under that second pink one. There we go. Knit two together. Okay. Now, I've knitted two together. I should have five stitches left on my needle, and I do. Okay, and the reason I have five stitches left here instead of four is because I intended to cast on 32 for my wonderful spur of the moment video today, and instead I cast on 35. So nevertheless, it I mean, it's beside the point how many framing stitches you have. Um, the point, the main point of this is to get your increases in the correct spot. So pretend I have four here left, and then my last stitch on the chart is stitch number 24, and that is the make one. So if I was gonna place another marker here, I would do that. And then I would do the make one to the right. So you have your daughter stitch here or the host stitch. You go in underneath on the row below, pull up the right leg and knit right into it. So knit into that, place your marker if you wish to on the denoting the end of your chart section. I don't have another one here with me, but that's where you would put it. That's the M on stitch number 24. And then you knit the rest of your framing stitches, however many that is for you. Okay, here we go. This is going to be row three of the chart. So we've knitted the framing stitches and you have your marker. And again, the M simply denotes the make one or the first increased stitch. So to increase making left, you have the daughter up on the needle or the host stitch. There, my magic loop is twisted here. Let me fix that. You have the host stitch or the daughter as Cat Bordy refers to. And then we have the next one down and you wanna grab, to make one to the left, you wanna grab the grandmother's left leg. So that's that one right there. Now a little tip, if you have trouble grabbing that or getting your needle in, just simply go straight into the middle in the back, just straight on into the center of that stitch in the back, rock your needle tip out to the back and around, swing it to the left. And that'll get you there without splitting any yarn. So knit into the back of that to reorient the stitch properly on your needle. So that's the M. Now on row three, we're just gonna knit a plain stitch and we're gonna do our left leaning decrease, which is slip, slip, knit. Okay. All right, then we're gonna knit two, knit two plain ones. Knit two together. I don't know why this yarn is giving me fits with the knit two togethers, but there you go. Okay, knit two together, you can plainly see that knit four, and then we're gonna make one leaning to the right. Three, whoops, four. Okay, so we have the daughter on the needle, and this greenish tinted one is where we want the mother's right leg. Now again, I'll show you that kind of pro tip. If you have trouble or you have splitty yarn, go right into the center of that, rock back, and then swing it around to the right. And that'll help you get a hold of that leg, hopefully without splitting any yarn, okay? So that's the M. That is the make one. Now you're gonna knit two plain ones. So your host stitch or the daughter is a plain knit on the chart. Knit the next one, that's your next plain one. And now that we're back to the little M. And again, we want that to be from the same row as we did this one. So that's gonna be that little bit of a darker tinged green one. So now we have the daughter on the needle, the mother became the mother, and now we're gonna grab the grandma's left leg. Okay, get grandma's left leg, knit into the back. Okay. And again, credit where credit's due. I did not come up with the uh, daughter, mother, grandma analogy. That's totally from Cat Bordy. She's brilliant. I um, mean, you can look her up at catbordy.com. So where am I? I just finished my second increase on the center portion of row three. So now I need to knit four. One, two, three four okay slip slip knit 
Now, if you notice, the right and left halves of this chart are just mirror images of itself. And so you could probably get away without the chart once you kind of memorize it and realize that. So now I have that pesky knit two together I seem to be having trouble with today for some reason. And then we're going to knit a plain one. And again, now we have our right leaning increase. So we have the host stitch or the daughter on the needle there. We're going to go in and grab the mother's right leg. Lift it up, knit into it, and that is the conclusion of the chart. So place your marker right there. This host stitch is not part of the chart. Okay, and then just finish knitting your framing stitches, however many that is for you. Okay, I hope that clarifies things for you. Again, props to Kat Bordy for the uh, generational analogy. That, I found that helpful. Um, think of it however you wish, the host stitches or the daughters, mothers, grandmothers, whatever works for you. But I hope that clarifies where those increases occur in relation to the chart in this knit along. Okay, as always, like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions in the Facebook group, Ravelry, or down below. All right, take care, you guys.